Welcome to my favorite nonprofit radio segment called Nonprofits Care. Their causes are really extraordinary. Welcome to Ralph Grill's show. I'm the founder of my favorite nonprofit. My co host is Helena Nee. Good morning. Good morning, Helena. And our show is called Nonprofits Who Care. And CARE stands for Causes Are Really Extraordinary. Uh, we're real excited to be back. We have our show every Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time here on Mile High Radio. And I wanted to, before I introduce our first guest, announce and make an announcement. Uh, we had a previous guest, A.J. Stapleton, who's with the 3T Ministries. Well, I just found out that he has been presented the award 7 <coughs> Every Day Hero 2012. So the Channel uh, 9, actually Channel 7, is going to be airing the story on October 14th at 10 p.m. So we're real excited for AJ. As you remember, 3T Ministries, they uh, do bikes for kids as one of their projects, and they give kids bikes that can't afford to ride their own or pay for bikes themselves. So it's a great organization, and AJ is doing a great job. So congratulations, AJ. Who is it that nominated him again? This is Channel 7. Seven. Yeah, he's got the 7 Everyday Hero 2012 award. That's awesome. amazing. That's why they got the 7 there, because Channel 7, that gave him that award. Yeah. And so it'll be aired on October 14th at 10 p.m. Nice. So that's exciting. And now I'm excited to announce our first guest this morning. Our first guest is Shelly St. John. Shelly St. John, that's Shelley right. Say that five times, Ralph. Right? Yeah. Oh, the mic, you get closer to the mic. Okay, thank you. Anyhow, what we want to do is talk to Shelly. Shelly's been in the auctioneer business, but she's an auctioneer that does events for nonprofits and charity auctions. So Shelly, how did you get involved doing that? Well, it, it, it kind of took on a life of its own. I've had a marketing company for many years, and I was looking at what I wanted to do for the next part of my life. And I handled real estate accounts and nonprofit accounts and all different types of businesses and I thought well maybe I'll try real estate auction. Mm -hmm. So I became trained as an auctioneer, got my real estate license and spent a year of 2008 in real estate auction and that was just at the beginning of the downturn in real estate. So it wasn't a space that I wanted to be in. Right. But the benefit of that is during that time people started to ask me to do charity auctions. So I did a few in 2008 and it was something I just loved. Thus, the Auction Divas became, and I have been doing nothing but schools, churches, and nonprofits since then. Oh, excellent. Actually, I met Shelly at the Rocky Mountain MS Foundation. They had a gala, and Shelly was the auctioneer there. And I was so impressed with what you've done, that's why we're talking to you today. Well, thank you so much. That was such a phenomenal event. They raised $250,000 total, which is amazing, because this is only their second year. And we did about a third of that. Uh, live that night, so it was a very, very successful event. Wow, and what does it make the difference when you have an auctioneer? How is that important? Well, a professional auctioneer versus a volunteer auctioneer mm -hmm. is twofold. A volunteer auctioneer, while they are probably very, very connected to the people, right. they it's not their uh, forte. They don't do research. They don't understand why people buy. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the different tactics that you can use to sell at auction, to get the most out of most participation out of the people, and obviously to yield the highest dollar amount for every item that you sell. Right. Because normally in the show we have people that you know are involved in nonprofits, and that's why we brought you on because. I think nonprofits, if they're planning an event or somebody's going to do a third party event for a nonprofit, usually they have a live and silent auction. And where you come in, Shelly, being a live auctioneer, you can give them a lot of direction there. Is that correct? That's right. I do a tremendous amount of consulting. And I think that really stems from my 30 years in marketing and event planning. Because I can, I can talk to a group or a committee and see several points at, at the first meeting of how they might be, t be able to improve year after year. Mm -hmm. How they might be able to structure maybe the timing or this, the sales process of the items a little bit differently. And so many times they have really awesome items on the silent au auction list that they would be perfect to sell at live auction. So that, that is a big part of it. Also selling strategies. Most um, live auctions you go to, you have lot one, 
through 10 or however many items you have. Right. And so I really work with my accounts to not only engage the people that have been supporting them for years, but also looking at new ways to engage the younger audience. Those people, I call them uh, future board members mm -hmm. because they're in their late 20s, their early 30s. They're just starting their families and their Being careers. Being groomed to become in. That is exactly member, right. right. So they, I call them tomorrow's board leader. Uh -huh. So how do you engage them? Because in a lot of auctions that have been going on for 10, 20, 30 years, you have a group of individuals that have a high net and a lot of disposable income, and they commit every year to multiple thousand dollars to their favorite nonprofit of choice. Right. But then you have this younger audience. How do you get them involved? Because they don't have five, ten thousand dollars to put their bidder number up for one item. So we really work with those groups to structure items to where more people can participate at live auction. Mm -hmm. Because live auction works and silent auction, any auction works for one basic premise, competition. Right. And you must get people bidding against each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I want this item. I'm willing to pay X dollars more for it than this person. I'm going to watch that item. This is going to be fun because I'm going to win that item. I want it. And the guests at these galas and nonprofit events, they want to support the, the event. Mm -hmm. they, they want to get as much money as possible. And, and they want, uh, when they bid on an auction item, obviously to get something cool in return, right. whether it's a trip or it's a book, or it's um, an opportunity to go to a Broncos game, or uh, a jersey. There are so many items that are sold. Mm -hmm. I saw, and I think this does make a difference, that's why it's important to have a professional auctioneer like yourself, is that you need to have these items be really a unique experience, so that they can't really go out on their own and buy it somewhere else, that this is a one-time time opportunity. That is exactly right. Mm -hmm. you, you try and structure your items, so that you can't get it anywhere else. Right. Uh, that is the big key. And whether that's a trip or a dinner, one of the most fun items I sold was for Greenwood Elementary School. They did a no volunteer for a year, uh, which was amazing. No volunteer for a year? No volunteer for a year. What does that mean? Well, most of the parents, well, the parents have to volunteer X number of hours per year. Right. Whether that's school lunches or after school programs or, or extracurricular activities. And so this was basically aimed at the husbands to buy for their wives. So, so they can buy their way out of volunteering? That's right, for one year. <laughs> and so it, they, they made this wonderful sash that said no volunteer for a year. And we actually ended up selling it twice. And I think we got nearly $6,000 for two of them, mm. which is... That's you know, amazing. You can't buy that anywhere. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So you're always looking at items like that. Yeah. Because I know St. Mary's, they had a fundraiser, and one of the auction items they had was that the parents could buy a parking spot yes. for the year. Yes. <laughs> Same concept. I've done that for yeah. Haver Havern School. And then uh, additionally with that, we sold um, seats in the auditorium for performances, mm. where they would get the first row, their family would get the first row. Or maybe it may, might be a holiday performance, or maybe it's a graduation. So every event for the year, they, their family got the first row. So they had their own VIP seats. That's right. They Excellent. had their own VIP seats. So what are some of the nonprofits that you've uh, done some charity events for? Gosh, I have done everything from Water for People, mm -hmm. uh, Most Precious Blood, mm -hmm. uh, Greenwood Elementary, Rocky Mountain MS Center. Right. Upcoming, we've got uh, the Colorado Music Festival in Boulder the Matthew Shepard Foundation, we're doing the Flowbots Foundation at the end of November, so it really cuts the gamut between schools, churches, and nonprofits. Oh, okay. I asked that question because I just wanted some of the nonprofits to get more exposure, and you seem like you're really involved because you told me that you do a lot of research prior to doing an event. How does that work? I do. Um, I will use Rocky Mountain MS as, a, as an example, and I find that every event that I do, I have some kind of personal tie or connection to the cause that they have. Mm -hmm. So for me and what I do, it's, it's yes to please the client and to do a, a, a high energy, great performance and raise as much money as possible right. the night of the event, but it really comes down to the people that that nonprofit serves. The kids with cancer, the people in the wheelchairs, uh, the kids that don't have enough, uh, enough books to read or, or know how to read. Or the kids with MS, which is the Rocky Mountain. Kids MS. with MS. Right. So whatever the organization is. So with the Rocky Mountain MS, I spent a tremendous number of hours consulting with them prior to the event. Mm -hmm. uh, I toured their research facility, and it was amazing. 
and got to meet their director of research and really see what it was they were trying to do and what steps they were taking to find that cure. Mm -hmm. So that empowers me when I'm in front of that audience to really understand the organization from a mission level and also how it helps the people that that organization serves. Oh, excellent. How long have you been doing this? You sound like you have a lot of passion. I, well, that's just my personality. I, I have always been like that. Um, I have been an auctioneer since 2007, so I'm fairly new into the game. Mm -hmm. But um, that hasn't stopped me. I think that... Well, it's still five years, which is... A well, experience it is health. five years, yes. Yeah. I've done over 100 auctions, so I, I'm not a newbie. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and I do about yeah. 30 auctions a year, uh -huh. uh, so I, I, do, I, I do work frequently. But I think my marketing background and the work that I've done with nonprofits on the marketing side has really given me that fuel to be able to be very successful at what I do. Oh, okay. So let's say someone's uh, you know, going to do a third-party event. Like there's uh, you know, the Passport to Hope, which they're going to do an uh, event coming up. Uh, it's called the Wounded Warriors Project that they're going to be benefiting. Yes. How soon do you think they should engage a live auctioneer for that event? How soon before the event actually happens should they contact the auctioneer? Well, I, d I have a 12-month timeline that I give to my clients all the time. Mm -hmm. So ideally, 12 months. So a year in advance, they should be contacting? I ideally. Right. But, and that's perfect world. But I we understand. Don't, we don't live in that <laughs> yeah. perfect world. Um, right. I have been engaged for auctions in as little as a week in advance. And wow. so there's not much I can do to, to help them um, uh, change or update Well, yeah, at that programs. point, they're going with what they got. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Advance, but, but those are still yeah. very successful auctions. And mm -hmm. those auctions that I have been booked at last minute, nine times out of 10, rebooked me for the following year mm. and engaged me really early so that right. we can make a difference. Right. and help them uh, really maximize their fundraising efforts. Yeah, because I know at my favorite nonprofit, what we did is we had a gala, and we were benefiting up with people, and we held it last May at the Marriott City Center. And what we did is I got a hold of the auction about three months in advance. And he says that a lot of times you, people get involved, like you're saying, over a year in advance. Right. So it's really good because then they can actually advise you on what kind of items to look for, also how to you know, set it up for the auction. That's right, and that's, that's I think, what most auctioneers do, and, mm -hmm. and I, am, I am the same. We want to look at those items. We want, we want the organization to have a plan for what they're going to do, whether it's 12 months in advance, six months, three months. Uh, we want them to have a plan for what kind of items they're looking for. Mm -hmm. That way they can maximize the volunteers that they have and who is going to be looking for what item. Right. But it's a combination of those experiential items. Exactly. And that's what I think hiring a professional auctioneer makes the difference for you because you get that kind of you know, consulting as part of the package. That's right. And yeah. you get their expertise as to what has sold well, how to sell it, and then the order of items. Um, typically we sell items at a bell curve. So we start out with a, either a game like a heads or tails or a lower cost item to really get the audience warmed up and to make sure they know where their better numbers are and uh -huh. that the microphone works, although we've done a sound check. Um, and then we, at the top of the auction, are the most valuable items because people get involved. They see other people bidding, they want to be part of it. And it's amazing to watch the audience because they're exhilarated. They're like, I think I want to raise my bidder number, but I'm not sure. I really want that item. Oh, I've never done this before. And you can kind of see that going through their minds. To that excitement. Yes, yes. in the audience. So right. it's, really, it's really fun to watch. Oh, very good. Do you recommend that uh, if a uh, charity is having an event that they put the auction items on their event page? Well, pre-promotion is, is definitely something that I think most organizations need to be better at. Mm -hmm. um, the, the auctions that have been going for 20, 30 years, they have this dialed in, and they know exactly what they need to do. Right. But most organizations, I think, fall short on that pre-promotion. Mm -hmm. So as an example, let's say that there is a eight-bedroom house in Keystone, and it's for a week over Thanksgiving in the following year. Right. So there, there are people attending that event who who could buy the entire house and fill it up. But if you look at it from a, a promotion, if you're looking at some of those younger people, they maybe can't afford the entire house, but if they got a group of four couples together, they would have a phenomenal week. Oh, so they can combine it. That's right. So yeah. And a lot of these events have uh, 
you know, set up for the item where it's going to be involved more than one person, that, like that, a dinner for ten. Well, the, very, very much. But if uh -huh. you if you pre-promote that there is a house for eight, or that that has eight bedrooms in Breckenridge right. over these dates, then someone can say, "Oh my gosh, I want to do this, and I want this couple to go, and this couple to go," and they get together they beforehand, can set it up. Yes. and they go, "Okay, our max bid per couple is this." So, and then they assign who's going to bid. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to the pre-promotion, and you do that through traditional means. Email, online, traditional social work, media. social media, a traditional marketing, mm -hmm. but also night of the event. So I get the question all the time: Are you the only diva? And I am not. I am the head diva, but I also have the diva ads. And oh, so you have a team of divas? I do. Wow. I do. <laughs> okay. The auction diva and the diva yeah. ads. So the diva mm -hmm. ads are really critical to most events. Mm -hmm. They um, they are stationed at the live auction display table during the reception or the silent auction. Right. And their sole job is to talk to people, meet and greet, relate to the mission of the organization, but explain what the live auction items are and the details of them. Because most people have, don't have any, any idea what's going to be sold right. at live auction. Mm -hmm. Then for those that do know that there's going to be a live auction, they really haven't spent any time to find out what's going to be sold. And we know from Sales 101 People aren't going to pay the, the highest rate and get involved in something that they've heard about once. And that's typically when the auctioneer is reading the description. Right. So we really get involved in that early part uh, in pre-promotion before the event, but also that promotion at the event. So then the diva ads, once the reception is closed, they move to be the ring girls at the auction and they're stationed in the audience to help me spot bids and to work with people who have shown interest in those items. Oh, excellent. So well, we're gonna, I'm sorry. No problem. We're going to go to a break right now, but when we come back, we're going to talk to Shelly St. John. She's a diva over here that does auctioneering, and we'll talk more about what she's doing. See you after the break. Welcome to my favorite nonprofit radio segment called Nonprofits Care. Their causes are really extraordinary. Welcome back. You're listening to Nonprofits Who Care. Causes are really extraordinary. This is Ralph Grills. I'm the founder of My Favorite Nonprofit, and you can find more information about our program on MyFavoriteNonprofit.com. I'm here with my co-host Helena Nee. Good morning. Hi, Helena. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Very good. And I want to make an announcement again prior to introducing our guest. Uh, we had a previous guest, AJ Stapleton, with 3T Ministries. And he was now awarded the 7 Everyday Hero 2012. And it's going to be aired on October 14th at 10 p.m. on Channel 7. So this is very exciting for AJ. Uh, he's a great guy. He's actually a full-time insurance agent. And he runs a nonprofit. He's the executive director and he volunteers his time. He has no salary or nothing from that nonprofit. And he has been distributing bikes to kids. I can't afford to buy bikes. So AJ's really got a passionate heart and we really are proud of you, AJ. Good job for that. Congratulations. He's probably listening. We love you, AJ. Yes, AJ, we do. And I want to introduce our guest now. We have Shelly St. John, who's with the Auction Divas. And Shelly, welcome back to our break. Thank our break. you. And uh, we were talking before the break about your divas at the events. Like at the Rocky Mountain MS Center, I was there, and you actually had your divas there working uh, prior to people going into the live auction. Right. And actually, I was up there looking at some of the live auction items, and they would walk up and they would say, you have any questions? And I was able to get, learn a lot more about the items, which I thought was really a great idea, because like you said, if people don't know what the items are, they're going to be a little empty, you know, a little hesitant to bid on it. That's right. And so that all works into the pre-promotion uh, with before the event and during the event. Right. So you, you just try and maximize communication anywhere you can. Okay, and you also have a website. Want to tell us a little bit about your website? I do, I have a Diva website. It's bank like the Auction Divas, uh -huh. but it's just a place to go and, and find out a little bit more about us, what our Diva Assurance is, uh, why we think that we operate a little differently. It's a place to look at our calendar. So many people that I meet every day um, want to know what are you doing I want to come see you and right now I will warn you that my website is being cut over to a new site so uh, the 
things that we have updated in the calendar, you may not see if you log on today, mm -hmm. but if you give it a couple of days, you'll have the new information uh, on there. So it'll be updated. Website. That's correct. So people always ask, where can I come and see you? So I have uh, all the I will have all the events listed on the site where mm -hmm. you can buy tickets, how you can participate, and then all the people that I have met throughout the 15 years I've been in Denver, I'm always looking to connect nonprofits with volunteers, nonprofits with donors, uh, some of my past clients who have things that they might be able to provide for a live auction or a silent auction. So I'm always trying to connect the community together. Very good. Well, that's the same thing that you know we do at My Favorite Nonprofit on our site. It's a social media concept where we have people that can go on and promote their favorite nonprofit, as well as nonprofits can form a group, and then people can come on and find them and see if they want to volunteer or get involved with them. That's fantastic. So it's a connection site of the social media aspect. But I see on your site that you're looking like you're doing some things with uh, action over here. Uh, what's the URL for your site? Uh, TheAuctionDivas.com. So it's TheAuctionDivas.com. That's correct. And divas is plural. And uh, I see that you're doing like your auction uh, type uh, positions on the pictures. Can you do a little example of how you do your auction? Well, everyone asks me that question. Hey, can you talk fast? Yeah. So the way I describe it is this, and I know we're on the radio, but if you take your right hand and kind of move it to the right, you have these fabulous, fabulous auctioneers that are seated in cars and cattle, and they've been doing that plus charity benefit auctions for many, many years. And they call something like this. Would you be 35? Would you be 35? Would you be 40? Would you be 45? Would you be 50? Would you be 50? Would you be 55? So you kind of get that that is those type, those are that type of auctioneer. Right. Then on the far left, you have the other far end, which is the art auctioneer. So they're in a setting, and they're up at the podium, and they go, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. May I have another $50,000? And when I say that, that always gets a laugh. And I'm somewhere in the yeah. middle. Um, I, I used to go to auctions with my mother as a child, estate mm -hmm. auctions and real estate auctions. And they were always so fast that I couldn't understand them. So my goal in auctioneering is to remain in the center and articulate. I still have the bid it on, bid it up, bid it on, bid it up. Would you bid another 25? Would you bid 30? Yeah. But it's not quite as fast as the others, and I really articulate. But the difference, too, with cattle auctioneers, they deal in 10 cents, and I usually deal in thousands. So, hey, it's just a little bit different of a dollar amount. That makes sense, yes. <laughs> and it also depends on the audience who you're talking about. Like you said, with cattle, they're expecting that. That's or, right. Or at a charity auction, they like to understand what you're saying. That's right. And a right. lot of times, I will also MC the event mm -hmm. in addition to auctioneering. So, as an MC, the tone has to be very gracious and very open and very warming and very welcoming. Right. And then when it comes to auction, all bets are off because so you're changing that's your my job. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a matter of fact, you said at the Rocky Mountain MS, you were the MC. That was great because I was there. We actually had a table because my niece has MS and she was one of the speakers there. So it's really dear to her heart. And they say they're going to be soon coming out with a vaccine. Well, actually, I think they're close to a vaccine and a cure. So the and two the are different. The vaccine would Is help. Is preventive? Would prevent. Right. Uh, and and there, it's, it's hereditary, especially in females. Mm -hmm. So daughters of MS patients have something to, to be concerned about. They're so that, predisposed. That's right. right. So that vaccine would be really critical for the younger people. And more and more younger people are being diagnosed right. earlier in life. And then the... Um, the cure would stop the, tra uh, the progression of the disease. And, that would be great. And in some case, then they're hoping that maybe they can turn back the effects. That so, would be awesome, especially because yeah. my niece is only like 32. Yeah. And unfortunately, her daughter is 14, and they think that she might you know, also be you know, predisposed for her MS as well. Well, all the more reason to log on to RockyMountainMSCenter.com and show your support, right? Exactly. That's a very great organization. There's so many good organizations out there. And, I know, Shelly, in your business, so you get to see a lot of these, so that's really a neat thing. Do you have any organizations you particularly volunteer for or work with in that respect? You know, I have volunteered for many, many organizations in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes The Gathering Place, Denver's Road Home, um, I'm doing some things with Youth Biz right. and Young Entrepreneurship. So I, I have kind of spread it around. I've been a Rotarian for years. 
a couple of years back, I kind of had to stop everything and all the boards that I was on, mm -hmm. including the Colorado Mountain Club and, and many others, just to kind of regroup my life. Right. But now I, I've got that itch. I've done Project Homeless Connect a couple of times in the last few years. Oh, yeah. And I go out and serve lunches for people who need uh, things. I, I Over the holidays, I really collect my friends and we do a lot of work for different nonprofits uh, to help people over Christmas and, and Thanksgiving. Excellent. I know Helena is from Cambodia and she went back to Cambodia and actually helped the kids there. That's amazing. Can you tell a little bit about what you did in Cambodia, yeah. Helena? I build playgrounds for kids. Nice. So, like, um, they don't really get to play very often, very much, because they work pretty at a pretty young age. So, I mean, everybody needs help right in front of us, anywhere, here, even here, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just, um, it's just where I came from, and I just wanted to give back to my roots. But that's really nice, too, with the playgrounds, because in, in, in a situation where you do need help, and all of us need help, my definition of miracle is a miracle is someone who temporarily has more doing something for someone who temporarily has less. And so at, at every point in our lives, we all need help. And to, to allow those kids to play, which they really need, to develop their social skills and, and many other things, that's amazing. It's my, it's my way of driving them to go to school, basically. It's my way of showing them that Learning can be pretty much, it's fun, it's awesome. Yesterday when I spoke to a bunch of 8th graders, um, I basically said, you know, education is like, you're like a car. Your education is like a key. You have to put it in the ignition to start it so that you can run, so you can move for, further ahead. That's right. And they just looked at me like, huh. Never thought about that. Well, won't that be fun to watch them progress yes, it, as the years go by? It has been. I went to the school where the kids didn't want to go to school and when I built the playground. The kids just, even though they come to school, they know that they have to go to class because right. they can't just come to play because the teachers saw them that they show up. Right. So they play so much that the teacher literally had to take the slides and put them inside and locked it up. Oh my. Because they would sneak in the middle of the night just trying to, to play. Right. And a lot of them don't know how to play in the playground because they've never seen it before. Even their parents never really seen it. Wow. So it's foreign to them. It's foreign to them. Yeah. So they would play until they get so sick. You know, that's, that, what is that? See, the the merry-go-round? merry-go-round thing where they just spin and spin and spin until they can't walk anymore. Oh my gosh. So, but it's just amazing to see. Yeah. Um, what's the, the seesaw? You know, they don't... The teeter-totter. Yeah, yeah teeter-totter. They put like five or ten on each side <laughs> and they kept like making it go up and down, up and down without, you know, so I have to get out and teach them how to play. Right. But it's just distract them from their hardship. Right. So. So it gives them a break, and so it's great because Elena's story, if you ever see her documentary, is so amazing that for her to be able to go back there, I'm just really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we're proud of you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you for what you do here. Thank you for everybody doing something. You know, that's right, like giving back. Just a little bit of something, letting someone go that's in a hurry because you don't know if they're on their way to the hospital. Right. You know, just being kind to someone at a gas station or, you know, at the sh checkout counter because you don't know what their story is. The other day I was at the bank and uh, I was making a deposit or whatever and there was this woman who was at the change counter and she started freaking out because it lost six cents or something like that. And so I just reached into my purse and gave her whatever change I had. And it was amazing. It, it, it did nothing to me, but it made her day. And if you can do that, I think that's great. And I think for people who don't give back, at some point they will. And when people start to give back, their lives change exponentially. Exactly. Um, and they the act have, of giving. That's right. right. And the act of giving back and helping others is um, something that I don't think you can replace. Actually, I think it's uh, you know the concept pay it forward yes. is such a great concept. Because I was at Starbucks, and the person that was in front of me, they actually paid for my coffee. And so when I got up there, they said, the car in front of you paid for it. And you said, to pay it for it. Nice. I said, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. So that's why I think about every day, how can you just pay things forward. That's right. And not worry what comes back to you, because the universe knows. Oh, so, completely. Yeah, that's great. Well, Shelly, we're real excited having you on our show. You're an awesome lady. 
and give, give your contact information so people can get a hold of you. It's Shelley St. John, the mm -hmm. Auction Divas. The URL is www.theauctiondivasplural.com. And uh, thank you very much. And don't forget, I've got a public event coming up on October 26th at Stoney's, and it's for Cops Fighting Cancer. Oh, so great. you can, we've got some great music and music acts lined up, so you can log on to Cops Fighting Cancer and buy your tickets. Very Thanks. good. Thank you again, and we'll be back for our second half of the show after these breaks. Have a great day. You too. My favorite nonprofit. Find out how you can make a difference at MyFavoriteNonprofit.com, where causes are really extraordinary. You and my favorite nonprofit, nonprofit who care, who care.